Hi, this is Simon, and in this video we're going to start adding some time variant controllers to our ensemble, some TVCs. Today, specifically an envelope generator. I'm going to start with a new ensemble and demonstrate an envelope generator very simply, and then we're going to add that envelope generator to the ensemble that we made in part 3. Finally, we're going to use that envelope generator for both an amplitude envelope and a filter envelope. So here I am to start out brand new ensemble, so Command N. What I'm going to do here is built-in module, oscillator. Let's start by just adding a sine wave. Run it to my outputs. And then let's built-in module, MIDI in, note pitch. Built-in module, MIDI in, gate. So we've done this all before, and we know this is going to cause us some problems. We know that this is going to cause some popping, and that's why I chose the sine wave and not the sawtooth wave, where the popping is kind of hidden. Let's play some keys. There's the pop when I open up that gate when I push a key, and there's the pop when I release that. I'm going to delete my inputs while I'm here too. So what we can do now is let's make a macro here. And first, let's call this macro ADSR. I'm going to go inside, built-in module, terminal, in, built-in module, terminal, out. Now what we want our ADSR envelope to do is take in a G, take in a gate, and then what it'll output is an A, an amplitude. Right click, built-in module, LFO envelope, and unsurprisingly, ADSR. So here it is. Our G will go into our G and our out will go to the A here. Then for the remaining of these, I'm going to create controls. As expected, this puts them all on top of each other on the panel. Let's go over there and clean it up. Unlock, release, sustain, decay, attack. So these now control the different parts of that envelope. Let's play some notes. Ha 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 ha. I've done something very silly. If I go back here, I haven't plugged it in. Gate goes in here. Amplitude goes out there. Let's try it now. Ah, now that's great. Now we can adjust these. I can make a longer release time, for example. Shorter release time. Shorter attack. Longer attack. Lower sustain. And so now we have control over that amplitude envelope. I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to click on this ATSR envelope. Go up to the check mark. View. Visible. On. I'm going to turn off show label while I'm here. Now this is very nice. Let me move my knobs out of the way. This is very nice because now I can see the shape of that envelope visually represented. While I'm at, I'm going to make all of these knobs small just to clean this up a bit. For now, that's good. Lock it down. All right, and so now let's watch what happens if I adjust the release. If I raise that sustain, make the decay shorter, make the attack shorter, and let's play some of these notes. And that's really all there is to it. I take in the gate, and now the gate no longer just flicks on and off the amplitude of that oscillator. The gate comes in and triggers this envelope. It takes the attack time to get up to the maximum, then it takes the decay time to get down to the sustain level, and then once I release the gate, once I release the key, it takes the release time to go all the way back down to zero. So let's do this in our assignment three. If you want to save some time, you can actually just go and copy this macro, and we'll bring it into the new ensemble. 
I'm just going to remake it for practice. All right, so here's my part three synthesizer. And all we're going to do is essentially the same thing. Up until this point, we had this audio smoother in here in order to prevent those pops from happening. So now I'm just going to delete that. And now I'm going to build my macro there. If you copied this from the practice patch, then you can just paste it right there, but I'm just going to build it again. There's my macro. Rename it ADSR. Go inside. Built-in module, terminal in. Built-in module, terminal out. Built-in module, LFO envelope, ADSR. In goes to the G. Out goes to the out. Out gets renamed to A. In gets renamed to G. I'm going to create controls. There we are. That's all made. Go back out. Wire it up. And now the only trick is I need to make sure I wire it to all of the amplitude inputs on my four different oscillators. Straighten it up a bit. And now I need to go to my panel, unlock it. Oh, I forgot to make it visible. We'll do that in just a second. Uh, once again, make these small. And I think I am going to rename these now. Just to save some real estate on my panel. Okay, that's looking good. Go here. Visible on, show label off. And uh, just as I did with these switches, I can change the size of it. I could make this very, very big. I'll just do this as an example. <laughs> um, I don't actually want to do that. I'll set that back to 100. But now, putting it in line there, this is looking good. I know I have some things over here. I might hide my scope at some point, but this is now what my panel looks like. Let's try it out. Now, this is a really big deal. Of course, I've got my uh, release a little bit too long, so it's ringing out a lot. But you can hear now how there's a lot more sophistication. Now we have our notes changing over time. And so all of these presets I have. So if I like that smooth lead, let me go store and put that over that. Let me go to my digital crunch now. I want this to be a bit harsher. Giving you a shorter attack, a higher sustain. I like that. Hit store, enter, cat piano. <laughs> I don't think that's a cat piano anymore. I think I broke that one uh, last time and didn't save over it. Let's uh, maybe make this a, a, a cat piano again. Sure. I like that. Store it. Um, And can you hear how this amplitude envelope really adds to the character of the sound. So I should certainly go through all of the presets that I have and add this properly. That was actually pretty easy. So now let's take it one step further. What I want to now do is add an envelope filter. You'll know the sound when you hear it. It's a staple of funk from the 70s and 80s. And I think it's going to be a really exciting addition to our synths. Let me go back out here 
And now let me add a new macro. Now I'm going to call this one onv, env, filter. I'm putting this in line with the other filters because in order for us to hear this envelope filter, I'm going to have it be a choice. So rather than using these filters, these static filters, you choose to use the envelope filter instead. The way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to add a switch here. Panel switch. And I'm going to call this filter. And then this is our filter. Add an out. Now we have an out that we can run to be our envelope filter. And now this runs there. Now that's going to look ugly. Let's go grab our filter switch here and we'll put it over here by our filters. So this is where we'll have that set up to select. I'm just going to delete my scope just to make this a little bit cleaner. Now, what I want to do is I want to send this mixed audio signal of all of the oscillators into that envelope filter. Built-in module, terminal, in. And now we'll run this into the envelope filter. We're also going to want built-in modular terminal in. We're going to want that envelope. So I'm going to rename this one ENV for envelope. Now, this is going to come from our ADSR. So I'm actually going to move this maybe so we can see it a little bit better. Fewer crossed lines, the better. So now we take in what we want to filter, the audio signal we want to filter, and now we're also taking the ADSR envelope that we've been using to control the amplitude too. Now we need to construct this. There are a couple ways to do this. I recommend using a low pass filter, and actually I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to use the ladder filter. Built in module, filter, ladder. This is a kind of low pass filter. If we look at the information, it says it's imitating the, the Moog filters. Check. Info. Fourth order, so a four pole uh, resonant filter modeled on the classic circuit patented by Bob Moog with a logarithmic control. Yeah, so, so we, we've got a P control and a res. For now, let's create a control for both the P and the res. Let's send in our input, and then let's use the low pass for, for our output. Now, we don't have any envelope running here yet. This is just now currently functioning just as a filter. But let's take this opportunity to move it to the right place. Right there. And clean up our knobs a bit. While we're at it, let's click on this, go to view, and let's make this visible too. And turn off the label. So now we can see our envelope filter as well. I think I might have to stop showing both my structure and panel at the same time, but I'll try to maintain that for as long as I can. You'll notice that we don't have our ADSR pictured or our envelope right now. That's because we don't have either filter selected with our switch. So let's click on envelope filter. And now we can see both of these filters. So now watch, I can change this cutoff up and down. I can move the resonance. I can play this too. Again, it's not an envelope filter yet, it's just a filter. Right, so that's functioning. In order to have this be an envelope filter, what we want to do is we don't want to be moving our cutoff manually by moving this slider. We want this cutoff to be moved by this ADSR. Let's think about how we do this. I'm not going to delete that. I'm just going to delete the wire here. Since this is a low pass filter, it means 
only frequencies below it are passing. So it's only useful for us if it's moving above the fundamental. All of the harmonics of the sound are above the fundamental. And so in order to sweep through those partials, which is what we would want that filter to do, we need it to be above that. So let's think a little bit about this. This envelope goes from zero up to one. And so if I just ran this envelope straight into the P, which it's not letting me do for other reasons, but if I were to just run that in, that would mean this filter would sweep up from zero to one and then back down. Let's think about that. Note number zero to one, that's gonna be significantly below anything that I'm playing. So I want this to be much higher. And I also maybe want to take in the information about the key that I'm pressing so that filter sweeps above that note. The first thing that we'll do here is we'll add in built-in module auxiliary A to E. This is a bit confusing, but Reactor considers envelopes as audio signals because they move at the audio rate. And so what we're doing first is we're going to convert this envelope, which Reactor considers audio, to be an event. And if we look very closely, we can see that envelope is putting out a white line, and then now it's putting out a yellow line, which lets us connect it to that P there. So once again, if I start playing keys, we hear no sound. This envelope is sweeping it up from zero to one, significantly below all of the keys that I'm pressing, middle C being note number 60. So let's think about that. We could, built-in module math add, add that to built-in module MIDI in note pitch, the note pitch. So now I run this in, and let's think about that. Now I have something that goes from zero to one, and I'm adding it to the note I play. So when I play note number 60, that means it sweeps up to 61 and then back down. Let's play some keys. Okay, I'm hearing some sound here, but I'm not getting that envelope filter effect. I'm not getting a sweeping filter. And the reason for that is if I'm sweeping up to just one note number above, that's not even an octave above, right? 12 notes are in an octave. So the second harmonic after the fundamental is going to be at least an octave away. So I probably want this sweeping through several octaves. So let's do this. Let's take this zero to one. And before we add it to the note pitch, built-in module, math, multiply, let's multiply it by this cutoff. And we can, uh, we can change the range of this in just a moment, but let's now try this as is. So let's peek at our panel. That P cutoff is set at 93. So let's say I'm gonna press note number 60. Zero to one, it's gonna start at zero. So the zero comes in. I'm playing note number 60, so this filter starts at 60. Once I press a key, it sweeps up over the attack time to one. One times 93 plus 60 is going to be significantly higher. Let's hear what that sounds like. Hey, that's pretty good. Let's make it a bit faster. That's pretty good. Let's bring that cutoff down a bit. The lower I get, it doesn't go as far above that fundamental. Got a bit too much random range in the mix here. Now we could try a different filter. Let's try the LP2. So this would be a, a less steep filter. Yeah, I'm not, I don't like that that much. I'm gonna go back to the four.
Okay, let's uh, tweak this a little bit. Let's go to the function here. I'm gonna set the minimum of that knob to be zero. I'm gonna set the maximum of that to be 96. So that's what, uh, eight octaves above what the note we play. I'm just gonna call this, I mean, I could call this something like range, right? And so now it's clear that that's the range of things. And then I do like that step size as one. Try some different sounds here. Let's uh, try just a pulse wave in there. That's kind of nice. So now keep in mind, Nothing up here matters because what we've done is with our switch, we've selected our envelope filter, which means none of this happens. If I would go over to here, now this doesn't happen, right? It's just these filters, so we don't hear any of that envelope effect. As always, I like this sound. So I'm gonna go over to my embed and I'm gonna go over to this. I'm gonna call this uh, space duck. I think I accidentally changed that. Sorry, I, I, I didn't save over that properly. I loaded that preset before I did it. So let me switch that back so it sounds to a, like a space duck. Okay, that doesn't sound like it did before, but I like that even better. So we'll save that over my space duck. Let's see if we can make a different envelope filter one. Now I might go back to this smooth lead and I like this one without the envelope filter. So I'm just gonna go back to filter there and then I'm gonna store. So it still has that ADSR change that I've made, but it doesn't have the envelope filter because I've now saved that in there. If I hop over to digital crunch, Again, store to make sure that I'm storing that I have that filter information properly. Cat piano, store, and now I've stored all of these. Let's make one more. Uh, I'm gonna try maybe to do, hmm, let's make some noise. And then let's add a saw to it. Turn down this random range. Don't know why those fines are down. Oh, because it was the cat piano. Bring down that noise a little bit. All right, and then I'll go add, and we'll call this one Funky Tweet. And so there you have it. Remember, our ADSR can be mapped to anything. It's just a control signal. We're using it now to affect the timbre with the filter, and we're using it to affect the amplitude. But we could also use it to affect the pitch if we want a little bit of a scoop in all of our notes. We could also set up an envelope generator to do something with our panning, or any other knob or control signal that we come across. Make some nice presets, do some experimentation, and let me know what you come up with.